Hello there and welcome to another Pond Guru metal detecting video. In this one I'm mostly going to be using the ATX and it's going to be a bit different because in the second half of this video I'm going to be on the beach. Somewhere where you've never seen me before. I generally don't like hunting beaches because I feel like a bit of a scavenger wandering around there for some reason. Even when there's nobody on a beach I still feel as if I'm being scrutinised. I prefer to be out in the country searching for you know, really old stuff. Nice surroundings, the beach normally doesn't do it for me. I thought I would give the ATX a try because apparently it's meant to be very good on the beach. So stay tuned till the end to find out my thoughts on that. First part of this video I'm going to be on pasture land with the ATX. I haven't had much success in land yet with it. Now I've had mixed success with the ATX on pasture. Out the back of my house where it's really hard packed pretty much just above a Roman road, it seems to get a hell of a good depth, pick out little targets, as soon as you move on to fluffy soil, you seem to lose the depth. There he is, John Rambo, tucked away in bed, we put him back to sleep, I'll wake him up when I get to the pasture site, see what I can find. I'm not hoping for miracles on the pasture site. But it'll be interesting to see how it does because I know I'm on a site where I have pulled some very deep coins up with the E-Track and also the Deus as well to a lesser extent. Still had coins down to 9, 10 inches with the Deus. It's quite fluffy, easy to dig soil. So I think that fella might struggle but time will tell. For the purpose of this hunt I will be using the Garrett ATX and I was hoping to use the E-Track at the same time in a Doolan detectors showdown of the two detectors. Unfortunately, neither will work with the other. When they're both switched on, no matter what I do, the interference is terrible on both machines. They really don't like each other. Now I do have a plan to solve that problem. I'm going to be using the ATX to find the targets and I'm going to mark them with these little plastic markers. I've already got two out behind me. I've got ten of these, I think. So I'm going to identify ten targets, put this fella well out the way, and go around with the E-Track, and hopefully identify those targets a little bit more accurately. If this fella stays the iron, I won't dig them. If it doesn't get any signal at all, I'm going to kind of assume that it's deep out of the range of the E-Track, and that it might possibly be something good and it's going to get dug. Obviously if it reads a good target as well, it's going to get dug. There's going to be a lot of digging. Okay, a quick change of plan. For the first lot of 10 stakes, I'm going to do it without checking with the E-Track. I'm just going to dig them. No checking. I'm going off what the ATX is telling me is a good target. Bear in mind I'm still learning the machine. I'm hoping at least one of these 10 is something good, but we'll soon find out. Well, we're off to a flyer. Big lump of iron. Another lump of iron. Nearly had a heart attack there. It's a tiny little bit of gold foil. This is my first coin with the ATX. And it's silver in colour. Modern five pence. Pull tab, pull tab, tiny little piece of foil, and another end of a pull tab. As far as non-ferrous and ferrous targets go, I think there was less ferrous, i.e. iron, than non-ferrous. Only one coin, but one out of ten digs is pretty good, especially on a site that's been absolutely hammered. There was some obvious iron, went over it with an iron check and it crackled. Um, but I don't think I dug much iron there. I'm going to go around pretty much the same area, I'll just fan out. With the ATX, I'll mark another 10 targets, but this time I'm going to check them with the E-Track. Nice loud buzz on that target, seems like a monster one, no idea what it is, but this knows it's iron. Okay, time to check those targets with the E-Track. I've noticed there's a bit of a breeze and I don't like wind noise in videos. The amount of footage I waste is incredible through wind noise. So I'm going to try and put this 
underneath my camera. It's a bit of dead cat material. It isn't a real dead cat, don't worry. Uh, and hopefully that little fluffiness in front of the mic will stop the wind noise. Yep, it's too windy for filming. And it's only a light breeze. Hopefully that'll be a clear picture with no wind noise. I haven't brought the earphones for the e-track, so the good targets should really scream. I'll give you the numbers as well, just in case you're familiar with the numbers on the e-track. And I'll also guess what it is I'm about to dig as well. How about that? Trifecta. Well, according to the e-track, that one's a small piece of foil. We shall see. Yes, it is indeed a small lump of foil. This is jumping up and down a little bit, but it's reading between 1218 and 1618, which makes me think it's either a ring pull or, uh, let's think, maybe it's a modern 20 pence or a modern 10 pence. I would dig it in the search for gold rings and so on, but I'm thinking it's trash. So both machines, yes, I would dig this signal. And it is a ring pull. Now I had to open the screen right up to hear that one. I only had the bottom line blocked out. To me, that is iron. I would never have dug that in a million years with the E-Track. I'm going to dig it, just to see what it is. Uh, didn't give any sort of buzzing or crackling or anything when I did the iron check with the ATX. So it'll be interesting to see what this is. And it is a lump of iron. And that wasn't very deep. I do know that the wire shaped things and the nails and so on are loved by the ATX. The bigger, heavier, lumpy bits of iron seem to be more seem to be more easily identified by the iron check function. Roughly 10.09, 10.08. Could be a little fragment of ring pull, could be foil. should have recognised that signal from before. It's a modern five pence. Ah, this one's just so blatantly iron, it's not going to get dug. I did say I was going to dig everything, but I can't see the point in digging that. That's right down the bottom right hand corner, properly iron. That's a strange one. It's reading 1917 one way and 1420 the other. Because 19 is very close to 20, it's just a bouncy up and down signal. I would definitely dig that with the E-Track in the hope that it was something like a half sovereign or possibly a small ring. That gave a really strange signal. Normally these on the E-Track would read way off to the left. That's a 2-2 bullet. Because it's been flattened, after hitting something, it gave a totally different signal. It moved it further across to the right on the screen. And the last target is iron. So it ain't getting dug. So that's 30 targets identified with the ATX, and four of them have been coins. That's pretty good. If I dug them all, Without checking with the E-Track, I would have had quite a bag of iron, but I also would have had quite a lot of non-ferrous targets. I 
I'll show you what I found out of 50 targets that were identified with the ATX. Hmm, no, that's not too bad. There's not that much iron there. But take into account it was helped out by the E-Track. There'd be at least three times as much iron and crap if it wasn't for the E-Track. Now I may reduce the iron finds once I get to know the machine a lot better. Ah, but it does struggle on pasture. So the coin finds out of 50 targets identified. Oh, there you go. Five. So that's one in ten on a coin shooting site that's been pretty much heavily bashed. I don't know how I didn't pick these up with the E-Track because I've covered every square inch of this, but I would have picked these up with the E-Track. It certainly gave good signals when I was checking them. So one in 10 isn't too bad, but pasture is not where the ATX was really designed for. Underwater, on the beach, under the sea, and in highly mineralized gold fields. That's where it does well. I've seen it do well on many a YouTube video. I haven't seen anybody using it in UK pasture and oh, I'm beginning to understand why because you do find a hell of a lot of iron. I've no doubt that it will find tiny little coins very deep but you've got to go through a hell of a lot of iron to get there. This was a good signal on the ATX. It was reading, ooh, what was it? Low high, I think. It was fairly faint, but it was lovely and clear. And I'm hoping that this is a good target because I've dug so much iron. Don't believe it. I'm not gonna touch it. I'm gonna get a zoom in here and let you see this. In here, what a gold coin. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Unbelievable. Wake up. You're dreaming. You're dreaming. You didn't find that coin. It's from your collection. You put it there for the purpose of this dream sequence. Oh, bollocks. Tiny little nail. I gave a cracking signal. Unfortunately. Oh, hello. I'd like to think that was gold, but. I really don't know. Base metal, I don't think it is gold. Not to worry, bit of a watch. Gold plated only. Definitely something in here. And because of the nature of this rock, I'm hoping this is a bit of a glory hole. Can't tell what it is, because obviously there's no numbers on the ATX. But it gave me a good signal. I've removed all these stones from the crack in the rock and I'm left with a deep pit which is rapidly emptying. Got to be something good in here. I feel something in there and it feels, well I'm hoping it feels coin shaped. It does feel coin shaped. But it's stuck right between the cracks in the rock. <laughs> I'm sweating <laughs> like. <laughs> Things to do for a coin, eh? Well, it may not even be a coin. 
There's a lot of little flat stones in there. Could just be one of them flat stones. Imagine, you know? imagine it's a uh, pull up town or something like that. Getting there, like, yeah. how deep the crack is though, you know? It's in there somewhere. I wonder if I could break that lump of stone off, you know? Well, if it's the first gold sovereign. <laughs> it bloody wants to be a gold sovereign, and not that much. <laughs> yeah. Imagine it is, you just pull it out, it's just like a gold sovereign. I all smashed the bits. Hey, it's silvery! I swear, I, I saw silver. Yeah, look at that. I'd be amazed if it's like a pretty desperate silver. Oh, it's 20 pence. Is it? <laughs> oh, man. It's better than out. It is better than out. It just proves there's things in these little glory holes. Like. Yeah, that's, that's surprising. That's a surprise me by that. Well, here we've got the find of the day. Two pound coins, somebody's obviously dropped today, and they're in lovely, spendable condition. Marvellous. And my machine's telling me there's another one here as well. Yeah. Another one. Nah. That must be it. Three pound coins. Another signal, same place. Hey, 50 pence. Get in there, that's obviously just been dropped within the last hour. The way the sand's blown about, it covered these, but it didn't cover the two pound coins. Marvellous. Ah, another lump of iron. Going from wet sand to dry sand doesn't seem to be a problem for this. It seems to do very well in both. But I can't dig very well in wet sand, because I haven't got a scoop at the minute. So as far as the beach goes, so far so good with the ATX. Very impressed with the depth it's getting. Pulled some really deep staples, which are like things to keep wire on fences. Probably is over a foot deep. Give a cracking signal. A few new coins, a uh, gold-plated watch, and I think that's about it. Very impressed. So, on the beach, ATX is awesome. Absolutely awesome. I cannot wait to take this on holiday with me because one of the places where we're going on holiday, it's tailor made for something like that. There's a shallow bay, a wooden pier going out. Oh, I want to go on more holidays just to use this on the beach and in the water. I haven't used it in the water yet. As you know, I've got a river site which is below a 15th or 16th century bridge just below a mill near an old campsite. The riverbed is exposed stone with cracks in below the bridge. It's absolutely perfect for river hunting. I haven't done it yet. I never got the chance last year. I was going to do it with the e-track but didn't get the time. With this fella it should be an awesome experience. So as soon as the weather warms up and I can coordinate my time with my good friend Gary we're going to go down there, and I'm going to go swimming with this fella. Can't wait. So on dry sand or wet sand, extremely impressed with that. It takes quite a lot to impress me, but that really does impress me. On pasture, uh, so far I'm not so sure. Now, if somebody gave me some awesome killer settings for UK pasture, I put them in and it punched way down below where the Deus and the E-Track went, I'll be bowled over. I'll be loving it. So far, I haven't found those settings and I've fiddled about with it a bit. So, inland, it's, so far it's been a little bit disappointing. It's a lovely machine to use, don't get me wrong, but I find in pasture, for depth and obviously discrimination, it doesn't stand up to the E-Track or possibly even the Deus. Wet sand, dry sand, get in there or get down there. 
some of the targets that I located on the wet sand, I actually gave up digging. I was down to the depth of that little spade, which is, I don't know, 18 inches maybe, and I was way down like that, chucking as much sand out as possible. Ideally, I should have had a sand scoop, yes. Getting a big pile of sand, going over it, and if it wasn't in that pile of sand, I was knackered because the hole was filling up with water. So I did have to abandon a few of the digs, unfortunately. They would be the ones that had the gold coins and necklaces and chains and big gold pocket watches in. I know that for a fact. So in summary, ATX on pasture, I don't know. On the beach, get in there. Absolutely awesome on the beach. And I can't wait to use it underwater. I apologize if I can't answer every comment. I used to make a point of answering every comment. But the way my online business is going, I simply can't get the time to answer everybody's comment. I will answer a few, don't get me wrong. I like to communicate with people, but I simply can't answer everybody's comment. It's impossible. There isn't enough hours in the day. So please forgive me for that. Thanks very much for watching. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. If you want to leave a comment, I'll, hopefully I'll get back to you. If I can, if I've got time. As far as detecting videos go, my next one will be... Let's think, what have I still got to edit? It'll be with the E-Track. And I was trying to locate the site of a medieval village, which in the late 1600s was described as having 400 people living there. Didn't really find it. Still found a little bit of cool stuff. So that'll be the next detecting video. A short hunt, way up in the hills with the E-Track. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Okay, a change of plan. Now I edited most of the crappy digs out. Now I have got a plan to solve that problem. You alright? <laughs> you were here last time I came. Alright. Well I have been home in between these times, you know. <laughs> Oh, Are you filming yourself? I am. I make videos for YouTube. So <laughs> I'm doing a comparison between two machines. Okay. I've got a new one, but it, whilst it goes supposedly hugely deep, it doesn't discriminate very well. So I'm, I, I'm finding the targets with the deep one. Right. And then identifying, hopefully identifying <laughs> what they are with the one that discriminates. So I'm guessing that this is foil. Ah, okay. But I don't know. Did you find any treasure? After I saw you last time, I'm sure I found either a sixpence or a shilling or something. <laughs> I, and it was within minutes of seeing you. Right. It was like you were a good luck charm <laughs> straight away. I'm sure it was just up the side of the uh, drive. Yeah. There was definitely a small silver coin of some denomination. And then Excellent. my look, and look, and look ran out and I dug nothing after that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. I thought, blimey, there's that bro. Again. <laughs> I would never have spotted them buggers. I can identify deep targets and discriminate them from muck. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but I think that's a Hungarian one. That's silver as well, and it's meant to have a picture of an angel on, but it looks more like a demon. That's actually one I bought, just because it looked like it had a demon on it. Right, because I haven't got much battery life left in the ATX, I think possibly an hour or two hours when it starts to make a noise, um, I'm going to bury some coins and then dig them up and pretend I've found them. If you've liked this video, please click the like button. If you haven't liked it, I beat you to it. That first dislike on this video is mine. <laughs> and why would I be foolish enough to click dislike on my own video? Well, because it doesn't really make any difference at all. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> I just want the fool who keeps clicking it as soon as I upload a video to go on and see that somebody's beaten them to it. 
because that amuses me greatly.